Hello everybody. All right, so now we're changing the throttle position sensor here. It is pretty easy. We just take out these two bolts here. There's one there and there's one over here. Uh, there's also, uh, what I did was I got a new harness as well or a new pigtail to go here. Um, so we just have to make sure that we wire this up correctly for the mega squirt. Um, <clears throat> that way we're, we're all good to go and we'll start taking it apart here. The uh, Allen wrench needed for this is four, come on, focus, four millimeter, that's hard to see, but anyways, four millimeter, and we should just be able to, let's see if I get the camera looking right, uh, just go ahead and take these things out here, the bolts, that's you, oh, both sides, Lighter on out. Uh, obviously, remove the harness. All right, there we go. And this is all it is. So, it's exactly what I showed you in the last video. This is connect connected to the sweeper arm on the inside, and then there's where your harness goes. I'm not quite sure what this little metal tab is for, but uh, you know it was on there, so I'll maybe see if it goes on the new one. I'm not sure. Not much to it. So here's the throttle body. I'll move from the other side here. See, it just it just holds that arm, and as the throttle moves, it drags that little potentiometer across, and there you go. That's how you get your throttle position. Here is the new one and here is the old one you can kind of see similarities um, if you'll notice the new one doesn't have a slot for adjustment here sorry I don't think that's gonna matter for us too much I want to say I'm not real sure who makes this one 151.0103, I'll look that up later. I'm pretty sure the bottom is a date code, 2003, and that's the case. This thing is super old, although that says 095, so not sure either. But if you notice, there is one difference. See, this comes out at 90 degrees, and this one um, is 180. That's not going to make too much of a difference it's just where, the way it goes but this is more akin to what the stock one looks like and it feels a lot more smooth than this one okay you can kind of see if I can get it looking right here so there's a lot of a lot of slop in here when I move it and it feels kind of crunchy you know like when you feel a bearing and the bearing is very uh, doesn't move very easily it's kind of the same thing here whereas this one it's nice and tight the spring feels tight don't feel any resistance in there so we're gonna hook this one up and I got this harness for it as well uh, I'm gonna go ahead and see if it's uh, I, I'm gonna put this in there just because it's got a tab that's not broken and I want that instead so we'll get it all hooked up here see how we do so these are the bolts I was talking about yesterday. Uh, see if we can see it on the camera here. Oh, come on, baby. There we go. So they are. They look okay. I mean, they're not. They're not rusted on the inside or corroded on the inside. So I'm going to reuse these. I'm not going to worry about replacing them. There's probably no need to do that. These uh, harnesses, they have, um, they have a lot of tape on them usually. So take your trusty dull sharp knife that you have nearby. Don't go too crazy while cutting through it. Just kind of lightly score the outside. Be careful not to cut yourself open. If you're using your sharp sharp knife instead of your dull sharp knife and just kind of split that bad boy right down the middle. Then, you should be able to just go ahead and split the harness off, or split the tape, there you go. You see the, 
see the line there. Just go ahead and get your fingernail under there and peel it on back. Now if it's warm, if it's hot, like you've just driven this thing, it's going to be gooey and gross and just nasty. So here we go. We've, so we pull the tape off back here and we can see the previous environmental connectors here. Um, we're not going to go too crazy. We're just going to go ahead and chop them off behind it and we'll use some more environmentals to go ahead and replace that. Go ahead and take the snips. Just go ahead and snip them right back behind our existing harness here. Come on, bastard. Okay. So that's the old harness. That's the one with the broken tab there. And looks like we have the same color configuration as the new harness, which is good. So we got black, blue, and gray. Black, blue, and gray. Let's go ahead and double check that we got the right one before we go wiring this thing in, which I've already checked, so that's why I cut it. But let's see, we got the same, same pin out, everything. And if you'll notice, I don't know, can you? If you can see in there, see how that middle pin, it's kind of stuck back down in there. The middle pin is recessed in there where it shouldn't be. And these are all right up top, right up front. So good thing we got the new harness here. Boop. Let's go ahead and quickly talk about what the correct splice to use is. This is a environmental splice, or I've always called them environmental splices. They have a little bit of goo in the end of the jacket there and once you heat it up it will protrude out the sides and seal it up so you just put your wires in there crimp it on up heat it down and it will actually seal it and once it's sealed this is hard to see because these have already been kind of under the heat and stuff but I don't know if you can see that there is Kind of some hot glue looking stuff sticking out. That's the sealant. That's what will seal off the wires. So that's what we want to use just in case we get any water incursion. We don't want it to leak into our connection and start corroding from the inside. A couple of tools that you'll want to have around just for electrical stuff in general are these bad boys right here. These are just garden and bender. I think they're from the Home Depot or whatever. But they're pretty cool. The way they work is it grabs wire, grabs the other side and strips them apart. So we're gonna use those to do the pigtail side first. So here's the, here's the new harness. Here's the old one. And one thing I don't really like about the way this is done, do you see how they're all, they're all together? Um, it creates a big old lump right there. Which is not too bad, but let's go ahead and change that up a little bit. We're going to go ahead and we know roughly what size we need or how, how far we need to go down here. So we're going to cut these in a stagger. So we're going to go like that, like that. And like that. Okay. So you see, now when we put them on, they will be staggered enough to where we won't have be we won't have a big old bundle there. So the way these work is, you go ahead and put them in there. And I like to for these environmental connectors, I like to go just to that first little that rivet right there. Maybe a little bit less than that. That's as quick as it is to strip those things. Then you just go ahead and strip all, all of them here. There you go. And I go ahead and you know twist them just so they're a little easier to manage to get into the to the little hole because there's a little the, the inside the crimp there's a hole you got to get these into. And if you leave them all frayed out, then they push out and do something stupid. 
And those connectors, you can just get those at Walmart. That's where I got these. In fact, I, <laughs> I got to looking in my drawer. I didn't have enough. I only had one of them. So emergency midnight run to Walmart and we're in business again. So if you'll notice, it says on there, heat shrink connector with heat activated sealant, moisture resistant. So these aren't marine grade or anything like that because they will get moisture in them if you're out in the sea or you know, they're underwater. They're not made to be submerged, but they're, they're good for keeping moisture out and corrosion at bay. So this is what we're gonna use. We're gonna take our tool and if you notice down here, see how it's got um, insulated crimper on there? That is that little half moon shape. So that's what we're going to use here. We're just going to go ahead and make sure we don't slide off. Take those, put it in the crimper. And I always like to crimp these opposite of the stop that little that little notch there a little notch there is a stop on the inside so you don't over insert it to both sides and go ahead and just take and put your crimper on there rotate it 180 degrees from there give her the old gusto okay And that's a good mechanical connection for this thing. It'll work great. So we're just going to tug it, make sure that we're not, we're not too loose. And that, look on the inside there. Okay. So now we're just going to do that with these other ones here. So I won't show that. Okay. Luckily, in this case, our colors all match on the harness to what we got here. So we got a light blue, black, and a gray. And we got a blue, black, and gray here. I confirmed on the other harness that is what we have. And that is the same wiring configuration that we're going to use with this one as well. So same thing here, put it on there, crimp it down, good to go. After you do the secondary side of it over on the harness, you wanna go ahead and just tug on that, make sure that's nice and tight. Um, the on the mega squirt harness, the black and white is your common ground that goes all between all the sensors. I think blue is five volt and gray is return signal. Um, just in case you're curious, but pretty much the same standard wiring for all cars, not just the mega squirt. Okay, so sometimes it's kind of a bear to get the back side of the crimper uh, all the way through through all these wires to get everything together. So sometimes it's easier if you just go ahead and get it in there to where you need it and then use these, which everybody has a pair of but nobody uses because they're pieces of shit. And go ahead and just crimp. Make sure wire doesn't slide out. Go ahead and just crimp and a nice initial crimp in there. That way it doesn't wander on you. Then, get these kind of snaked in there. So you got a lot more grip down on these. Um, once you got these in there, kind of put them in the same notch, and then get rid of the old one, two. And there you should have a pretty nice connection. Um, just go ahead and continue, you know, tug on it, make sure that it's not gonna come out. Make sure that you got a nice solid mechanical connection and continue on to the next one. Also, make sure these wires are twisted around because if they're loose or they're not twisted, then it'll just crush down flat inside that inside that uh, connector and it won't it won't do you any good. It'll just slide right out. And then the last part is the fun part: playing with fire. So. You know, gasoline's up here, this way. So just don't burn the car down. Just be smart about it. And it doesn't take much to get these things to, to, to cook off so they start collapsing. And you know they're 
well and truly cooked when they got the uh, little goo coming out the inside. You can use a heat gun for this, but you know when I was when I was doing a whole bunch of wiring uh, on this truck earlier, I found that it just took so long and heated up everything around it too much. So I just prefer to use this this little mini torch, and it kind of turns clear when it's when it's melted enough because the uh, the goo on the inside melts down. So you can see it kind of turned clear there. You should have some goo poke out the end. You can kind of see it there. So just go ahead and heat shrink them. Get them, get them all nice and hot. Get them sealed real nice. Try not to burn through the insulation on the wires. Uh, that some a lot of that stuff isn't heat retardant, so it will just burn off the the burn off the insulation. And just do it in bursts, because you know you can always put more heat on it. You can't take more heat off of it. You don't want to do something stupid. Um, and you make sure that you get all sides. Because you'll have, if you just heat it on one side, the other side won't be shrunk, kind of like that one. There. So we're going to go ahead and heat it up. Kind of come from the middle, middle part of it, and then move outwards. Just give it some old heat there. Now that connection should be nice and good and work great. So let's hook up the throttle position sensor and make it work. We're just going to go ahead and re-loom the connectors. They're still a little hot, um, so you know, don't burn yourself. Don't be, don't be a dummy. Or get thicker skin on your hands, one or the other. Don't have little girl hands. Just tease the wife about all the time. And just, you know, put some spiral loom on it or something like that. Um, that helps it give it a little bit of structural rigidity once you get it all wrapped up with the tape and uh, that gets it uh, looking nice and, and this is all gooey because it's you know hot and then I've been hitting it with the torch so it's even hot er and once you get all these poked back in the loom there you go like that then just wrap it up with some electrical tape and uh, you're good to go all I'm doing now is I'm just taking normal electrical tape and wrapping it around here um, I'm sure they make some high heat application stuff but I don't have any and this is good enough so I'm just gonna go through and wrap it up I'm gonna wrap up that junction there make it look all pretty and get it looking nice again so we got it all wrapped back up here at the junction back together um, I'm not gonna worry about this for now it's too late to worry about that so I'll just go ahead and Plug the stuff that we need to go back in to the right spots. Put the oil breather back in, took that out to get it out of the way. So now all we got left here, oh, that's not good. Oh, we got pins pulled out there. get all that shoved back in there okay so this goes to to the ignition system so we'll have to look at that a little bit later but let's go ahead and get the throttle position sensor put back in there put this thing back in there we're just gonna do the reverse be able to see much there um, okay so this little tab the the sweep that I showed you has to be behind the arm back there otherwise it won't do anything so make sure you get it in the right spot go ahead and thread your your uh, bolts in there get them started and then go in there with your tools and get it all cinched up plug her in and then we'll have to calibrate it. 
when you're having a hard time getting tools into small places, you may have to switch from like a T-handle to just a regular old Allen wrench like that. That'll help you get into a little bit smaller spots or tight spots. Uh, if you don't have like this uh, spark knock module in front of this thing is right in the way. So um, you're screwing these into aluminum. So don't go crazy. Otherwise you'll strip it all out and you'll make a little nice thread spring. Yeah, looks like we're in the right spot. So, uh, uh, there we go. And we're good. So now we're in the correct area. The tab's locked in. We are ready to rock. All right. So to calibrate this thing, it's pretty easy. We're just going to go ahead and uh, turn it to run. Get this thing sync up, hook up. All right. So you can see there, throttle says 2.9% and it's bouncing around probably because it's at its extreme limit. Extreme. We're just going to go to uh, go up here to tools and calibrate TPS and there we go. There's our ADC counts which is like your your, your uh, throttle counts working. So we want to go close throttle, get current, 188 counts, full throttle, get current, 785. Accept. Boom. Now we're rock solid. Back to damn near the same spot every time. That's all you gotta do. So now we can see if she'll fire up. And I, I ended up fixing an issue yesterday where um, I had put some new firmware on it and it didn't didn't like the tune after it did that so I had to revert to an old tune and just go from there which did fix it so we'll go ahead and uh, light her off and see what happens a beautiful we are good to go so that is the replacement of the GM throttle position sensor. Learned are ye. Leave me a comment or go to my blog, www.waxyworks, W A X X Y W E R K Z.com, and uh, touch base with me. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll tear down that throttle position sensor and see what we got inside, see what went wrong, do a little autopsy on it it's just uh so we got here's our here's how much burble we've got in it so it, you don't have we don't have nothing thanks for watching